capacity utilization. Okay, let's take a look at the formula you need to learn for your exam for capacity utilization. This is one you must learn, so remember to practice. You can look back at a video that's already been made showing you techniques to learn formulas. However, the formula is the actual output divided by the maximum output times 100. And it will give you the answer as a percentage. So let's take a look at what does that actually mean. Capacity utilization is a measure of the output in a business and it measures really how efficient a business is at using its resources. So for example if a business makes a hundred cars a year but it only currently makes 80 cars in a year then its capacity utilization is 80 percent. So actually 20 percent of their resources are going to waste at the moment if you want to look at it in that way. So what does it actually mean? If a business is not working as close to the maximum capacity as possible then it could be seen it's wasting resources because you're not getting your economies of scale you're technically seeing your unit costs increase with each item you make and that could make you less competitive compared to your rivals and your competition however you've got to consider the other side if your business operates too close to maximum capacity then it might make it difficult to cope for unforeseen circumstances so what would happen if a machine breaks down or an employee may fall ill? So if your company is working at 99% or maybe even 100% capacity and the machine breaks, then this means you won't be able to fulfill all your orders. So some customer somewhere may have to wait for their goods to be delivered. How they might feel when they have to wait could depend on how much competition you've got. They may decide not to use your business again and then go elsewhere. Or they may decide that your business is losing its reputation for being reliable and loyal and thus damaging the added value that you've gained from your brand and your image. Okay, what is the ideal figure? Well, the ideal figure is seen to be around 90 to 95%. So that means that really we want to look at 93% being the ideal. Some companies will tell you that they won't stop until they get as close to 100 as possible. But bear in mind, as we said before, 100 is a dangerous figure if you can't actually achieve it and something goes wrong. So why do some companies operate under capacity? Typically it's because a product might be seasonal. So for example ice creams. You may sell lots of ice creams in the summer but the factory in the winter is a lot quieter. You may have new competition in the event of the market. That could mean that you find that you're working under capacity. You could just see demand fall for your product because maybe you haven't updated your product life cycle or you've not thought about developing a product which the customer wants. Or you may find that mergers have taken place within your business and because you've got mergers, you've got spare capacity. You've got that synergy where two become one and you've got spare capacity within your business that you're now not using. And obviously as a result, you might want to take some actions to change the way your business operates. So what tends to be the effect of under capacity utilisation? Well, typically the increased unit costs which then means that you reduce your profit margins, which then tends to mean you reduce the motivation of employees. Some employees become concerned about their job because they can see that maybe there won't be the chance for them to carry on working because it's getting quieter and quieter and quieter. Employees are not daft. Or some just get bored and they might quite simply leave so you could lose some skilled employees and you have to pay to retrain them. So in the short term, long term, these are the foreign effects you may see with capacity utilization. Let's say demand does increase. You might want to do a short term option to offer overtime. Some employees like this as it's more motivating and more rewarding because they feel that they're getting to benefit by getting extra pay. However, on the downside, remember you may work them too much, they get tired. So it very much is a short term option. You could subcontract where you offer the contract out to somebody else. So you find a similar company that does the same sort of product to yourself and you give them the chance to make it for you on the subcontract agreement but again be careful that you don't lose any image rights or protectionism that's got to be there you've got to make sure you cover your idea and protect yourself you don't want to give your competition that chance to get a competitive advantage over you or you could take on some temporary or part-time staff problem with that tends to be if you use agency staff remember they'll be vastly expensive and if you use part-time staff, they may not be trained or they may not even be motivated really to do the job to the best of their ability. 
In the longer term, of course, you could look to increase your production capacity. So you might want to look to build a new factory or invest in capital-intensive production, such as machinery. Or you could look to do better stock control, so invest in a just-in-time system like JIT. But obviously, again, expensive systems, more longer term. Okay, that should now mean that you've got a better understanding of capacity utilization. Hopefully, you're able to calculate it, you know the formula, and you can think about how it impacts on a business and an organization. What you really need to do is probably do some wider reading around this and have a look at some of the resources on our website and see if they will help you to form a better understanding of capacity utilization. It is an interesting topic and it's one that people do find sometimes quite difficult to understand. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter or via my YouTube channel or now check out our brand new website, bebusinessbee.co.uk.